Good afternoon. On today's news broadcast, we'll be looking at what will be happening at Austin P in the next few weeks. Also, Halloween is just around the corner, and that means people across the country are coming together to help children have a safe holiday. Plus, local sports, weather, and more. APSU TV News starts right now. Good afternoon, I'm Brandon Crossland. And I'm Ileana Capion. The long-standing tradition of Ghost will be held this Sunday, October 30th, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., located at the Fort Harris Stadium on Austin P. Campus. Feel free to wear an exciting costume. For more information, contact SGA at sgasec at apsu.edu. Something else happening at Austin P., the Student Veterans Organization is proud to present a Veterans Day lunch. This lunch is sponsored by Chartwells and will take place on Thursday, November 10th at the cafe in the Morgan University Center. Veterans who signed for complimentary lunch vouchers by no November 7th will receive reserved seating and special buffet offerings from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on November 11th. The admission tickets will be valid any time that day, but the special buffet will only be available from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Upon turning in their admission ticket, veterans will also receive an American flag pin that will provide access to the special buffet offerings. For more information on this lunch, contact Wes Grubbs at wgrubbs at my.apsu.edu. An affirmative action bake sale caused some controversy at the University of Texas. Some students gathered in protest on UT's campus on Thursday, calling the bake sale offensive and a bad idea. The group, Young Conservatives of Texas, put on the bake sale selling the same cookies at different prices, depending on the customer's race. For many students, whatever point the group trying to make was lost in the delivery. The university issued a statement saying the bake sale did not represent the ideals of the university strives towards. Well, a five-year-old Tennessee boy will be recovering from heart surgery and instead of trick-or-treating on October 31st. So as CNN's Kelsey Lerner shows us, a TV station in Knoxville treated little Gabriel to an early Halloween. When it came time to pick this year's Halloween costume, there was never a question what Gabriel Hodgson would choose. You ready, Mickey Mouse? Ready! More than anything this year, you want to be Mickey Mouse, Clubhouse, in his car, riding around, and I thought, is that really possible? <laughs> At just five years old, life has handed Gabriel more tricks than treats. Gabriel has spinal muscular atrophy. What it does is it takes away his muscles over time, um, and he'll lose all of his abilities. Gabriel, you going to put this on? Couple that with heart surgery on Thursday and trick-or-treating like the other kids is pretty much out of the question. So I said, I've got to do something for him. Five years old and not being able to enjoy all the holidays that most kids do, it's not very fair to him. So about a week ago, Uriah came to Local 8 News for help. And together, we came up with a plan to give Gabriel the Halloween he deserves. Instead of door to door, Gabriel came to WVLT and went cubicle to cubicle. Happy Halloween. Oh my goodness, there's some candy. Desk to desk. Okay, I'm gonna give you several things. A big old bag of Skittles. Sales office to newsroom. High five right here. <laughs> there we go. Racking up more candy than his bag could hold. Look at all that candy. I'm not sure how to describe stuff like this in words when it's so meaningful. What you guys did here helped to to maybe make him feel a little bit better and and a little bit more cheerful and to have a little more fun. With each he's filling his life with happiness. One handful at a time. It's a real struggle, but moments like this are what give us a little bit of hope and a little bit of strength and give him a lot of happiness. In Knoxville, Kelsey Lair, Local Late News. Commuters in the Bay Area had a tough time getting around Tuesday morning. Residents are now being told to prepare for another round of storms. CNN's reporter Amy Hollyfield has more. 
The rain was pretty constant in the North Bay this morning, and as it came down, people got up early to deal with it, or some entertained the thought of not getting up at all. Always hard to get up, but definitely today, I definitely want to stay home, hot chocolate, movie. It's, it's like the perfect day to do that. I commute from Cloverdale, so it's kind of like driving in a car wash. So the wipers are up high and the lights are always on. <laughs> and yeah. slowing down. It appears people slowing down made a huge difference. The CHP reports it was a quiet morning on the highways, no major incidents. I haven't had any spin outs or anything, so that's the good part. <laughs> traffic was slow, though, something commuters have learned to deal with. Well, the traffic is going to be a normal thing because, you know, everybody needs to drive slow and safe. So don't worry about it. I like the rain. I love it. Those who live outside say they know we need it, but say this does make life a bit uncomfortable. Try to stay dry, you know, the rain comes and goes, but make myself comfortable. Weather officials say the Bay Area had as much as four inches of rain over the highest peaks on Thursday. For more on weather, here let's head over to Ben Goodman. Thanks, Eliana. Well, it looks like fall is finally in the air, especially over here in New York City. They're finally getting some wind and some cold temperatures starting in the 50 degrees right now. Right here in Chicago, 59 is getting great for weather for the uh, first game. Of, no, the third game of the World Series. Make sure you check that out tonight. And also Seattle looking looking just normal. And Los Angeles, though, they're starting to get some storms and clouds today. So the temperatures are finally falling for them kind of in our areas in the 70s. Let's take a look at today's highs for Tennessee. Looks like about normal for everything else, but in your 80s. Knoxville is going to be here in 79 degrees, uh, so they're going to be feeling a little bit of the heat as well. And Memphis, just a little bit warmer at 85. Tonight's lows, though, however, about the same in the mid-50s. Knoxville will be hitting 49 and Memphis at 61. Taking a look at today's temperature right now outside is a gorgeous 72 degrees. You might want to go get a walk in before you uh, get into the night hours. Tonight's temperature though, it's going to be 55, very clear. You might want to bring a jacket so that way you're really prepared because the cold weather will be coming after us tonight. Taking a look at your five day forecast, it's going to look about the same for everything for the next five days. Today and tomorrow, highs will be in the 80s and the, low to mid, the upper to mid 50s. Sunday looking good for ghosts, no rain in the forecast, a high of 85 for the day and low of 60. For your trick-or-treaters on Halloween, make sure that they're going to be bundled up with a nice coat. The high for the main day will be 85 and low will be 60, and Tuesday will be looking about the same. Coming up next, we'll have you here today's Political Corner, and we'll see what's happening in the world of sports. APSU TV News will be right back. Let's go pee! Let's go pee! Let's go pee! Let's go pee! Austin P in the last two years has added more opportunities for students to study abroad, um, including additional exchange program opportunities for students to study abroad for an academic year or a full semester, and also short-term study abroad opportunities for that student that can't afford to be gone for more than a few weeks. For one, you get an opportunity to live in a foreign country. I got to travel around Europe and have a great time all while I'm earning college credit. Tremendously, tremendously mind blowing. Learn the language, and um, I was always fascinated with the culture and the people. First hand experience on the culture. I got to taste the food. So if you're looking for a great experience, for a great experience. So if you're looking for a really great experience, come take a look. Come take a look. Come check out the study abroad program. Welcome back. Let's take a look at today's political corner. New polls out of some key battleground states show that this presidential race is tightening. Voters in Nevada and Florida are making this a closer race than some experts predicted. And now both sides are gearing up for a frantic finish over the final 12 days. CNN's Diane Gallagher has this report on the race for the White House. She's known as the closer. I am grateful for Hillary, for her leadership, for her courage. And for the first time, Michelle Obama is bringing her closing argument to the same stage as Hillary Clinton, the first lady campaigning with Clinton to secure the crucial swing state of North Carolina. This 
may be one of the most, if not the most, important elections of our lifetimes. Clinton, who is still fighting off the slow drip of the WikiLeaks email hack, is battling to keep states like North Carolina leaning her way. New polls out Thursday show Donald Trump closing the gap in some battleground states, moving Nevada and Florida back to being considered toss-ups. That's good news for Trump, who started his day with family by his side during an interview on Good Morning America. Well, we're very proud of our father. And is focusing on the must-win state of Ohio. Early voting is underway, so make sure, get out and vote. We don't want to, we don't want to give this away. But his road to 270 will require much more than the Buckeye state. Even with tightening polls, take a look at CNN's electoral map. In order for Trump to win, he would have to get every red state, every toss-up state, those are in yellow, plus one of the light blue leaning Democratic states just to reach that magic number. It is a very narrow path, and though his poll numbers are trending up, time is running out, with just 12 days left to go until November 8th. In Washington, I'm Diane Gallagher. The Republican vice presidential candidate Mike Pence was involved in a plane accident yesterday at New York's LaGuardia Airport. The plane was trying to land during a rainstorm and slid off the runway, tearing up concrete before coming to a rest on a patch of grass. The Federal Aviation Administration said the crushable concrete runaway, runway was what saved the plane from encountering more damage. The 37 passengers that included Pence yeah, that included Pence. Crew members and Secret Service were all evacuated from the plane with no injuries reported. Here's a headline many sports fans never thought they'd hear. The World Series heads to Wrigley Field tonight. The Cubs host Cleveland Indians in a Game 3 of Chicago, and Chicago is buzzing with excitement. CNN's Karen Kaifa has more outside Wrigley Stadium. You can't blame Wrigley Field for getting spruced up for tonight. We got Chicago in this first World Series since 1945. There's no other feeling like it. Yep, the last World Series game here, October 10th, 1945. Wrigley didn't even have lights. The Dodgers and Giants still belong to New York, and among today's other major league parks, only Boston's Fenway stood. Chicago was on the losing end. So the fans' anticipation of tonight is not lost on the players. It's just as exciting for us as it is them because you know, this is something that we want to be a part of as well. Baseball has brought frustration to both lakefront cities. Cleveland hasn't won a World Series since 1948, but the Cubs last win 1908, 108 years ago. So whether you just got on the Cubs bandwagon, like tiny twins Addison and Clark, named for the famous stadium intersection, or you're a longtime dreamer like Loretta Dolan at age 102. I certainly hope they win. Tonight brings a major event. The festive spirit that started with the pennant win Saturday has carried through the week. I think I'm still in shock. I really am. Uh, a lot of crying, a lot of hugging. The enthusiasm dampened a little by a game one loss, but buoyed by a win in game two. Now, game three, decades in the making. I have faith. No matter what, I've never given up. The 2016 Cubs bringing the Fall Classic home to Wrigley, finally. And now let's head over to Ben Goodman for a look at your Gov Sports update. Homecoming was a big day for so many alumni and students, but for the governor's football team, the homecoming magic came just a bit late. The Govs totaled 500 yards for offense for the first time since 2006, but came seven points short of completing a comeback against Mercer with a final score of 41 to 34. The governor scored twice in 33 seconds late in the fourth quarter, both cutting the deficit to a touchdown. Freshman Kintel Williams led the offense with three rushing touchdowns, while junior receiver Jared Beard and redshirt senior Tamarius Mitchell each had career-high performances. The Govs return to conference play tomorrow in Cape Girardeau to take on the SEMO Redhawks. Kickoff is at 1 p.m., and you can catch all the action on the OBC Digital Network. The Govs soccer team has ended its regular season with a bang. Last weekend, they picked up two big conference wins against both Belmont and Jacksonville State. Last night, however, the Battle of the Border returned to Morgan Brothers soccer field as the Govs took on the Murray State Racers. Both the Racers and the Govs put their best efforts out on the field, but a goal was far from sight for both teams. Going all the way to 110 minutes, the game ended in a scoreless tie. The Govs end the regular season as, with a record of 5-2-3 in conference play and will travel to SIUE for the opening round of the OBC tournament. That game is at 1 p.m. on Sunday. The Govs volleyball team has continued to put the conference on notice. With a big non-conference victory against Alabama A&M Tuesday night, the ladies are looking to hopefully climb out of third place with their final road trip of the season and heading to UT Martin tonight and to SEMO on Saturday. 
Tuesday night also saw the Govs and Lady Govs basketball teams return to the Dunn Center for their annual sneak peek. Fans in attendance will be able to receive autographs from the team, see the Govs in action in an inter-squad scrimmage, and see the rising of the conference championship banner from last year. With both teams attending media day this week, both teams have been predicted into different rankings. The women were picked to finish ninth in the conference, while the men are picked to finish third in the OVC West, behind top pick rival Murray State. The Govs open the preseason on November 1st against Thomas Moore, and the women play their only preseason game against Kentucky Wesleyan on November 7th. Thursday night football returned to Nissan Stadium as the Tennessee Titans took on their AFC rival Jacksonville Jaguars. Marcus Mariota threw him for 270 yards and two touchdowns to end his home struggles as the Titans rolled over the Jags 36-22. After a 3-0 lead going into the second quarter, the Titans capitalized with 24 big points in the second quarter, locking in the big win. Tennessee now stands at 4-4, four four, only a game behind the Texans in the AFC South. The Predators continued their West Coast road trip last night, taking on the Los Angeles Kings. After a scoreless first period, the Preds and Kings put up a goal, goal after goal in both the second and third periods. With less than a minute left in overtime, Jeff Carter slides the puck past Pecorine for the game winner. Nashville did pick up a point, but it still brings the record down to 2-4-1. The Preds finish their California road trip tomorrow night against the San Jose Sharks. Finally, could the centuries-old World Series curse for the Chicago Cubs come to an end? It sure may seem like that because they've been going strong against the Cleveland Indians the past two nights. Cleveland took the first game with a 6-0 final. It would only take two runs in the first inning to secure the win. Wednesday night, the Cubs returned to the favor with a series evening 6-1 win. Cubs designated hitter Kyle Schwarber singled on a ground ball to bring in Anthony Rizzo for the game-winning run in the third inning. Game three starts tonight at Wrigley Field. First pitch is at seven. That's all for sports. Coming up next, today's Health Minute and this week's Take a Look at This. APSU TV News will be right back. Are you prepared for life outside of college? Probably not yet. Austin Peay's Career Services is there to help you transition to post-grad life. I've had some friends use Career Services, but I've never used it myself. Whether you need assistance finding a major or preparing for your future career, this free service has all of the tools to guide you. We try to equip students and alumni um, with the tools that they need to go through that job searching process. They built their resume and it gave like complete relief off of me because I was able to be able to walk out of there and be confident in my next interview. The entire reason of going to college is so that you can actually get a job. So those resources that are available to you in career services are second to none on campus. It's the best place to go to. Stop by room 210 in the Morgan University Center or visit www.apsu.edu slash careers. Take the first step into your future today. Professor, can, uh, can you help me here? I, I wrote all this down in class, and uh, well, when it came to the homework, I just... Uh, would you mind going over some of it again with me? Ring time in Paris. Hello? Mm. Are you even listening? I need help! For you, college isn't just about earning a degree. It's about earning their respect, getting their attention, and setting an example for them. That's why our programs are designed for you and them. Austin P. State, keep earning a living and living your life, all while earning your degree. Welcome back. Operation Cross Country X, an international crackdown on child sex trafficking, rescued 82 children and led to the arrest of 239 suspected pimps and other criminals. The FBI says this operation exposes the grim fact that children are being sold for sex in the U.S., sometimes by their own parents. CNN's Amara Walker reports. Child sex trafficking knows no borders. Please, please, no, please, no, no, no. Its victims often run from one horror, only to be ensnared in another. The United States FBI provided this survivor's account on its website. She says she was abused by her father until she was 15, then tricked by a pimp into prostitution. I was 17 at the time when I met him, 
and I got in the Dawn Entertainment business because of the fact that he asked me about it and he told me the money would be used towards the modeling and I believed him. He beat me. He had me in hotel rooms by myself for weeks. Go hungry because I wouldn't obey what he wanted me to do. It's a trap. Once you're there, it's hard to get out of. It's really hard. It's a story the CNN Freedom Project has heard many times and one the FBI knows all too well. In just four days, the FBI says they made hundreds of arrests and rescued 82 teens. Uh, we find that the average age of the uh, minors that we do recover are is around between 15 and 16 years old. Um, there's been as young as nine, but that's not the, the norm. They're normally between 12 and 17. These are a lot of girls that come from uh, families or, or, or just the, or a lot of times in a, in a broken situation, whether it be victims of sexual assault as uh, previously in their home life or physical abuse. Authorities call it Operation Cross Country. It's in its 10th year and includes law enforcement in the United States, Canada, Cambodia, Thailand, and the Philippines. This is part of the overall initiative by the FBI to address sexual ex exploitation of children. Many of the teens don't realize they are victims. The recruitment process by the the pimps, the people, the, the, the subjects of, the, of these cases, um, they have a very, they, they, they really have a very powerful influence over the girls physically and psychologically. They might entice the girls initially to come into that life either through, through, the, um, uh, through the promise of money, love, love whether as a boyfriend or love as a father figure. I have learned I was a victim. At the time, I didn't believe I was because I was like, hey, I volunteered. But then the day I didn't volunteer is something I was tricked into thinking I can turn out to be a model. For victims being exploited, there is hope. If you're a victim and you went through this, there is justice for you, definitely. Not only is there justice for you, you don't have to be scared anymore once you elaborate and go to the police because they will be arrested to where it's me, you can breathe. I can breathe and say I can finally put him behind me. Amara Walker, CNN, Atlanta. These tiny babies are ready for Halloween thanks to the March of Dimes. Volunteers from the group distributed handmade Halloween costumes to some of the patients in St. Luke's Hospital of Kansas City's neonatal intensive care unit. Their parents got to pick their costumes, Photographers donated their talents to take these pictures for the families as part of an early Halloween celebration. Each family also got a card that read, Trick or Treat, Smell My Feet, and included the baby's footprints. Political pumpkins are the newest thing this autumn, and a Halloween costume's take on a certain cell phone safety recall is smoking. CNN's Jeremy Roth has that on today's Take a Look at This. With Halloween just around the corner, it makes perfect sense that Wednesday is National Pumpkin Day. And what better way to celebrate than with a Trumpkin? One Ohio homeowner is ringing in the holiday, not to mention the impending election, with a porch full of politically charged gourds. There's Trumpkin, of course, but also his opponent, Hillary Clintkin. And for good measure, Vladimir Putkin. The display's creator says, in fairness, both Trumpkin and Clinton weigh about the same, but Putkin is heavier to represent Putin's heavy influence on the election. Topical. You too can be topical this Halloween. Just check out this homemade costume poking a little fun at Samsung's ongoing Galaxy Note 7 recall. The embattled tech giant had to pull millions of the phones from shelves following reported fire and explosion concerns, and one self-proclaimed Apple user decided to add insult to injury by pairing up his vaporizer with a bunch of Note 7 boxes and going viral to the tune of over 4 million views as a smoking Galaxy Note 7. Oh, and his uh, fiance is apparently dressing as a firefighter. Now you're just being mean. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Uh, it sure, certainly is smoking. That was <laughs> smoking. Uh, we apologize for the further uh, earlier technical difficulties, uh, but we also want to congratulate Illy for being the queen uh, of this year's homecoming. So what are you going to do you. now that you've... I want to go to Disney World. Of course, what that's what we all do. Of course. You know? No, I was so surprised and so shocked, but I was happy that I had the support here. I had a bunch of my friends from California, and you know, like I said, I was shocked. I was definitely, my jaw dropped to the floor. I didn't know what to do, and I was shaking, and I was cold, so it was all, yeah. 
is all a whirlwind of experience, but I'm super excited. It's really awesome. We're very, very proud of you. And Thank uh, you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Be sure to join us in the interaction by liking us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash APSU TV news. Thanks for watching another edition of your Gov News Weekend Update. And as always, let's, let's go, go pee. pee.